song. So let's get started. Dear Jesus, thank you for your word that teaches us. Please change our hearts through it and bless all these kids that are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. So crowds of people often gathered on the shore of the Sea of Galilee to hear Jesus speak and teach. He taught them with a parable, which is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Jesus often told parables when he spoke to large crowds and sometimes even when he spoke to only one or two people. The earthly story was always about something very familiar to people, but the spiritual truth was hidden within the story. The people who had a heart to hear and believe what Jesus taught would understand the heavenly meaning, but the people who did not want to believe would not understand. One day, Jesus told a parable about a sower sowing seed, like a farmer scattering seed. In Jesus' day, the sower walked through his field, scattering the seed over the ground, throwing it out by hand. As he scattered the seeds, some of the seeds fell by the wayside on the path where the soil was packed down by people walking on it. The seed could not go down into the hard-packed soil, so it lay on top of the path until birds came and took the seeds, had them for lunch. Also, some of the seeds fell on shallow, thin layer of soil that had stones buried right underneath the top layer of soil. The seeds in the stony ground were able to go into the ground and quickly sprouted in the shallow soil. But because of the stones underneath, the roots of the new little plants were not able to go, grow down deep enough to get water and nutrients. When the sun came up, the heat caused the plants to wither. Some of the scattered seed fell on the ground that had thorns growing in it. The seeds went down into the soil, but the thorns soon choked the young plants so that they could not grow strong and bear fruit. Finally, some of the seed fell on good soil, and they quickly sprang up. The roots went down, down deep, and since there was no thorns to choke the plants, they matured and became strong plants, bringing forth a lot of fruit, maybe 30 times what was sown, or 60 or 100 times that little seed that was sown. Jesus finished his parable to the crowd by saying, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Perhaps the people on the shore looked at each other and maybe they said, oh, what an interesting story. Mm -hmm. Jesus knew that some would hear his words but not really understand the hidden meaning. They really did not have ears to hear. Do you have hearing ears so that you can understand the hidden heavenly meaning in this parable? Later, Jesus, explained, Jesus did explain the heavenly meaning to his disciples. The parable of the sower and the seeds is recorded in three of the Gospels, and it is one of the most well-known parables that Jesus taught. It describes how people respond to God's word, especially the Gospel message. The Bible is different from any other book, for it is God's message to us. It is like the seed, because it has new life within it. The Bible has new life within it. The flower seeds that you plant do not look like much. If you, A lot of you maybe have a garden, and you just put a tiny little seed in, but in a few weeks or months, those little seeds can turn into glossy leaves and later into beautiful flowers or beautiful carrots. God's word does that, does something that is even more wonderful than that. Peter tells us that we are born again or have forgiveness for our sins and eternal life by the word of God. God uses his seed, the word of God, the Bible, when we become members of his family. We are born into God's family through the word of God, and it is through the word that we grow into strong Christians. God's words are so important that Jesus said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. The sower in the parable is anyone who gives out the word of God to others. So if you tell 
the Bible, a Bible verse or the story of the gospel to somebody else, you're like that sower that sows the seed. You're like that farmer that scatters the seed. The different kinds of soil are like the different kinds of hearts that people who hear the word of God can have. Now, some soil is hard because people walk all over it, and it be until it becomes a hard path, like this one right here. The seeds that fall in such hard soil cannot take root and grow, for the soil is too hard. Therefore, the seed lies on top of the ground until the birds come and carry the soil away. The second kind of soil is shallow soil, which looks good on the surface. But the stones right below the surface keep the roots from going deep into the soil. Though the soil seeds sprout up quickly in such soil, the roots cannot go down deep for moisture and nutrients, so this plant soon wither. So like that. They grow, but then they die right away. The third kind of soil is thorny soil. This one here. Though the seeds fall into the soil, they are soon choked by the thorns, which take moisture and nutrients out of the soil, leaving little for the new plants. The plants are choked by the thorns and cannot produce good fruit. Now the fourth kind of soil is good soil, this one up here. The seeds easily go into the soil and the roots go down deep. There are no thorns or weeds that compete for moisture and nutrients, so the plants grow strong and bring forth a lot of fruit. Jesus' disciples asked him to explain the heavenly meaning of this earthly story. He told them that the seed is the word of God. He said that the different kinds of soil are like different kinds of hearts that hear the word of God. The hard soil by the, the wayside is the hard heart that is not at all interested in the things of God. He's the one or she's the one who hears the life-giving word of God but does not receive it into her, his or her heart. He does not believe that Jesus died to save him from the punishment for his sins. His heart is not ready to believe what God says. This person goes on his way not even remembering what he has heard. Soon birds snatch the seeds sown away. Now the birds in this part of the story represent God's enemy, Satan, who takes the truth of God's word out of this person's heart before he can even think about it. Now the shallow soil down here represents the heart who gladly hears God's word, realizing it is the good news that he needs. However, the word does not take root in this person's heart because the soil is so shallow. He accepts God's word as true and talks like a Christian for a while, but when someone makes fun of him or he has to decide to follow God instead of the crowd, he turns his back on God. When he encounters a problem, he walks away from what he has heard because he has a shallow heart. And the word of God never took root in his heart. Now the thorny soil represents the heart that hears the word of God that is so full of world, uh, worries or worldliness, love of money, that there isn't room for God. The worldly heart allows other things to occupy his time and his interests. Maybe the thorns are worries, desire for popularity at school, interest in sports, or desire for the things of this world that occupy his heart rather than the things of God. He has no time for Bible reading and prayer. He'd rather sleep in on Sundays and not go to Sundays to school. He'd rather spend his time on games and sports and hobbies. Now, the good soil represents the obedient heart that not only hears and believes the word of God, but also understands and obeys it. The obedient heart lets God teach him, help him, and use him, and he brings forth the fruit of good thoughts, good actions, and telling others about the love and forgiveness of Jesus. Such a person has a happy and satisfied life. Not an easy life, necessarily, but a happy and satisfied life. He is honoring God and is a blessing to others. And he brings forth an abundant harvest. Ephesians 2.10 tells us, For we are his workmanship. We are God's workmanship. We are created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has made for us, appointed for us, that we should walk in them. God has made us for a purpose, and he has good works that we are to do if we allow God to work through us. Bringing forth those good works is what God expects us to do once we are saved. So we need to ask ourselves, what kind of heart we have? Is my heart hard? Do I have no desire to listen to God's word? What will I miss eternally if I continue to have a hard, indifferent heart toward God and the free gift of forgiveness that he offers me? We are probably all familiar with John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. We may not be as familiar with John 3.18. He that believes in him is not condemned, but he that does not believe in Jesus is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Condemned in that verse is referring to an eternity separated from God. Those who do not believe that Jesus paid the price for the forgiveness of their sins will not have a home in heaven when they die. Is your heart hard? Now, is my heart shallow? Do I follow Jesus only when it's easy, convenient, and, po and the popular thing to do, but turn my back on him when it gets hard? 
In Matthew 16, 24, we read, If any man will come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Following Jesus will require sacrificing what we want and being willing to follow God no matter how easy or hard it may be. Is my heart full of worldly things or other things so that I have no time for Jesus and the things that honor him? In John 2, 15 to 17, God tells us about this kind of heart. God says, I'm going to read it from straight from the Bible, because you guys can read straight from the Bible too. It says, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the cravings of sinful men, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. Ask God to take the desire for worldly things out of your heart and fill it with a love for Him. Or is my heart the good soil, ready to hear and obey God by putting God first in good times as well as in hard times? John 15, 5 says it this way, I am the vine. This is Jesus talking. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that remains in me and I in him, he brings. He will bear good fruit, for without me you can do nothing. When we have asked Jesus to forgive us for our sins and we have the Holy Spirit living in us, we can consistently obey God and honor him with our lives. Whatever kind of heart you have, it can become good soil if you ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Ask God, pray, say, God, give me a soft, obedient heart. Ask God to give you a heart that obeys his word. The Bible says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Which heart do you have? As we pray, let's talk to God about it. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we so much want to follow you. We so much want to have soft, obedient hearts. Lord, we do want to bear good fruit. And I pray that you would change our hearts to be more like you and to bear good fruit. Thank you so much that you died on the cross for our sins and that we have eternity in heaven with you. In Jesus' name, amen.